Big 12 battle about to tip off your college basketball Saturday. Brendan Manzer, Jay Alter with you. This should be a good one. And we are underway in Morgantown. West Virginia this week made Tuesday night in Manhattan, Kansas, had a 21-point lead in the second half, unable to close it out. How does this team just mentally get prepared for another Big 12 game? Well, if Bob Huggins still had Javon Carter, Baxter Miles, a guy like Nathan Adrian, you know, those guys were like defensive backs with their experience. They just would move on to the next play or game. This is still a young team, particularly in the backcourt. You know, the positive side of it is building that 21-point lead, but defensive lapses, not taking care of the basketball. Barry Brown has a huge second half in Manhattan, and, and that's the difference of West Virginia winning and losing. James Bolden goes into attack mode, draws the first foul of this game. You know, Bob Huggins, after the loss, as we take a look at Mike Boy in the Oklahoma State Oklahoma head State coach Oklahoma. in year number two with the Cowboys, and again, similar, he does not know losing in Morgantown. He won as an assistant coach with Brad Underwood, and then he won last year in his first year as the head coach of Oklahoma State. Well, two years ago, as an assistant with Brad Underwood, Oklahoma State had Jawan Evans, a guy that you could put in his hands late. Last year, three really good seniors that helped him win the basketball game. And there's Coach Bob Huggins, one of the legends in the history of college basketball, one of the great coaches of all time, and a guy that's still trying to figure out his team. He told us he kicked himself all the way back to Morgantown after the loss to Kansas State because he put the ball in the hands of untrustworthy guys. We said, well, who is trustworthy? He said, we're still trying to figure that out, and we're already in conference play. Yeah, four games into conference. And that's not typical for Bob Huggins, but they faced a lot of adversity. Obviously, with Kanate being out with the knee injury, your best defender, your best offensive player, and then young, unproven guards in terms of go-to guards at this level and still trying to develop and get better. West Virginia... When you think about them, it's all about the defensive end. But offensively, you miss a guy like Javon Carter. They don't have a go-to guy, a five that they feel comfortable with scoring the basketball consistently. And that is so dangerous in this league. Well, that goes back to point guard play. You see James Bolden with the ball right here. He is one of those guys that has had to fill those minutes. And you'd really like to have him more off the basketball. A really young Oklahoma State team. A couple of freshmen in the starting lineup for Mike Boyan. Cameron McGriff's not one of them. Here's the junior. Dominated in this place a year ago. 20 points, 9 rebounds. Shot clock winding down. Two on the timer. Left it short. Almost bailed out with the shot clock running down. When you see Oklahoma State's offense bogged down, and you just mentioned, Jay, about West Virginia maybe not having that go-to guy, particularly at the guard position, so too could you say that about Oklahoma State. They've had a lot of possessions late where they don't get anything. It's a wasted, empty possession. Trying to develop Michael Weathers, who comes off the bench. Isaac likely a freshman. It's a tough spot for him to be in as a freshman at this level to come in and go make plays late in the shot clock. Dezogwa, step back three, hits it. Thomas Dezogwa trying to get the Cowboys going early in this game. And as you and I talked to Bob Huggins yesterday, what are your concerns with Oklahoma State? He immediately says their ability to shoot the basketball, particularly Dezogwa and Lindy Waters. We talked about Oklahoma State's victory here last year, Jay. They hit 10 threes in this building. Mountaineers trying to counter punch on a three. Can't connect the junior Chase Harler. Zogla shooting 44% from three. And Lindy Waters coming off a five for five from beyond the arc performance. Career high, 19 points in that win against Texas. So those two guys, the ones you have to watch if you're West Virginia. Yeah, and, I, you know, you talk about McGriff. I think Lindy Waters is that other player for Oklahoma State that you've got to continue to get consistent production on the offensive end. Foul called against James Bolden, reached in on DeZogla. So there is 
some of the things that Coach Huggins is frustrated with this basketball team. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Bolden puts his hands on Dezagua, 25 feet away from the basket. Officials have to call a foul. Derek Culver checks into the game. That's a freshman that West Virginia is really excited about. He's been practicing for less than a month. First practice was December 14th, and he's averaging a near double-double in Big 12 play. 15 points, nine and a half rebounds per game. How do they get him involved early in this you, you, game? you got to get him touches, and, and Culver is a tremendous talent. Big-time talent, great body, athletic. Putting up great numbers in these five games, Jay. And the interesting part of it, he doesn't even know, really know what he's doing yet. That's Here. how talented he is. Here he is. Decides to kick it out. Harler can't knock down the three. But knocked out by Culver in a second effort for West Virginia in an immediate foul call. Boy, both these teams, and especially West Virginia at times, really labor to score. That's two wide open looks from Harler who's a very adequate shooter I mean that's what he does he's a shooter who plays the rest of the game smart that's why he's in there but he's missed two wide open looks how much more difficult does it become when you see that you're 0 and 3 the the mental side of it the confidence is low for this West Virginia team they are not used to be being at the bottom of the Big 12 standings the West Virginia still trying to find their footing. Bob Huggins trailing by three. Take a look at our Wendy's Wooden Watches midway through this year. Diedrich Lawson of Kansas and Jared Culver, outstanding player from Texas Tech. Tell you what, Brendan, one, one guy who probably would be on that list if healthy, West Virginia's Sagabe Kanate, who's out for the rest of the year. Uh, Jay, that's a great point. Uh, only played eight games has that bum knee and it's been a challenge for him to get healthy is likely gets That's to the rim one more time for Oklahoma State but cannot they tremendous on the defensive end one of the nation's best rim protectors not only in the half court but he would allow West Virginia and Bob Huggins to press more this year because on the back end of the press he's there to protect the basket but he's also their best offensive player I mean that is such a huge loss for them we talk about struggles at point guard you add that in as well and it's amazing that West Virginia has been in those first three Big 12 basketball games with a chance to win. Well, you mentioned 0 for 3, but those three losses have combined 12 points. The shooting struggles continue here for the Mountaineers. Had two real good looks at it. Oklahoma State does a good job, even though you think you have plenty of room and time to shoot, of getting quickly to close out and trying to disrupt your three-point shot. Likely again this time couldn't get a shot up. It'll stay with the Cowboys though underneath He has been active early in this game the freshman and he does not play like that. He doesn't he's, he's got a big 12 ready body Touches all phases of the game as Michael Weathers will come in for him and likely exits I think a big couple of moments for likely to grow up to feel like he belongs at this level Scored Oklahoma State's last four points Tuesday night in the win against Texas. Good drive to the rim and then two free throws to ice it late. Weathers, shot clock running down, has to pull and pop. No good, the foul called underneath. It's against Oklahoma State. Cameron McGriff Oklahoma on the rebound. And there's the challenge. Maybe the biggest challenge outside of being young for Mike Boynton this season, as we touched on earlier, point guard play. Mike Weathers checks into the game. You got to understand time score. Where is the shot clock? And you got to go to work quickly and get the ball in Weathers or a guy like Likely's hands. And Oklahoma State has struggled to do that at times. Lob to the rim and it pays off. Jermaine Haley using that six foot seven frame to lay it in for two. And a great offense right there by West Virginia, emptying out that weak side. Overloading the left side and that allowed Haley to break free use his size at 6-7 to go over the top Took nearly six minutes, but that's the first made basket for West Virginia. Remember the first two points came from the foul line Dump inside another freshman can't make it You're in a Trouble underneath and West Virginia comes away with it What what a great block right there by Colvin they give it to him on the offensive end. Haley cutting, and he has back-to-back -back baskets. 
Jermaine Haley finding form for West Virginia. And the Mountaineers turn on the press, and a foul is called. Press Virginia is what this team... He just stepped on Bolden's foot right there. As Bolden tried to recover and get in front on the inbounds play. Stepped right on top, and, and Weathers was not putting any weight on that right foot as they carried him back to the locker room. What do you make of West Virginia going to the full court press? Bob Huggins told us yesterday he doesn't trust this team to press, but here it is. Well, that's because Oklahoma State struggles against full court pressure. Curtis Jones. Basketball Jones. That'll count for three. His foot just behind the line in the junior, another sharpshooter on this Cowboys team. Backdoor cut. Denied. Yorane, the freshman, getting there. To stop West Virginia, this offense trying to find form, a jump ball. Just Both offenses seem just back and forth. Really, neither team has been able to get it going. Well, both have struggled in the half court offensively. But here's Thor and Nay for Oklahoma State, one of the freshmen that continues to progress and develop for Mike Boynton. Fourth in the league in block shots. Tremendous length, athletic, good timing. But Jay, he's been in foul trouble each of the first three Big 12 games. Opponents have done a great job getting him to leave his feet, get him in foul trouble, and that affects Oklahoma State's defense in the half court. Number zero, Trey Dooms has checked into the game. That's significant because the freshman from Georgia, he was planning on redshirting this year, but Bob Huggins told us we need his athleticism. We need a spark. And so they're lifting the red shirt. This is his first game action for the Mountaineers. Well, with the lack of consistency, the lack of trust right now on the perimeter for Bob Huggins, and as you're alluding to, he told us yesterday, hey, I want to win right now. And I think Dooms hopefully can give us a spark. Athletic, he's long. And he's really West Virginia's only straight line driver on the roster provide a guy that can get to the heart of the defense likely gets right by dooms but the freshman recovers grabs the rebound lamont west fires a three got it i think it helps west virginia get into flow offensively by picking up the speed of the game again this is not Press Virginia of the last four years with Javon Carter and Dexter Miles, but I think against Oklahoma State, you could get them to take quick shots like he did right there. They can be turnover prone, and when you struggle in the half court like Mountaineers do on offense, sometimes Jay can get you in rhythm, moving towards the basket in transition. Another cut inside. McCabe is there, can't finish. It was a great feed, but nothing going underneath for the freshman Jordan McCabe. Dooms again with the rebound. He has been active since that red shirt has been lifted. Wide open three. Why not? Doesn't fall for Jermaine Haley. Tapped around underneath. Finally corralled by Cameron McGriff with Dooms getting that red shirt lifted. That's the 15th Mountaineer to play this year for Bob Huggins. He is trying everybody. Likely on the take. A lot of contact. Nothing called. Pushed ahead to McCabe. Freshman lost the handle. Inside to Culver. Almost had a second effort there. Three freshmen on the court right now for Bob Huggins and two for Mike Boynton. Well, both teams extremely sloppy right now with the basketball. Yeah. This is a game. A few months here on campus. Just Bob Huggins said we needed him to mature. It wasn't disciplinary in the sense that he was doing anything illegal. We just needed him to grow up. And he's been so impressed with how he's responded. Ready coming. LeBron James, Zion Williamson. You see the high school numbers. And look, numbers aside, I will say physically, I don't know if we've seen anybody as NBA ready at that age since LeBron. Yeah, that, so much has been said about him that you know, I obviously can't make it any better. But at his size, his athleticism, his motor, this is a guy that brings it, and 
obviously being compared to LeBron James, that's just something that we do. But he is absolutely a superstar. Jordan McCabe follows his own shot. Second effort. Derek How about it? Culver. Derek Culver. And one opportunity for the freshman. Well, two things that Bob Huggins' teams try to do, they try to turn you over, and then the best staple in his coaching career is they absolutely attack you on the offensive glass. And this was Oklahoma State's biggest concern coming in. West Virginia, last in turnover margin in the Big 12, but they are still number one in the league in terms of offensive rebounds per game, and that is why right there. While the officials are taking a look at the monitor, we'll tell you we have an injury update for Michael Weathers, the redshirt sophomore, about five minutes into the game. When West Virginia was pressing, he went down with an injury. It's a right ankle sprain. He's getting taped up right now, and they said at halftime they'll evaluate whether he can give it a go. And it maybe a situation where he's going to have to deal with pain, and that's a big loss for Oklahoma State if he's not be able to be effective today because Michael Weathers... A guy that's really turnover prone has done a much better job for Mike Boynton over the last five games taking care of him. And been solid, starting to find himself a little bit offensively. And that has in turn taken pressure off the freshman Isaac Likely. The story of Derek Culver is first practice December 14th after he missed the first few months here on campus. Just Bob Huggins said we needed him to mature. It wasn't disciplinary in the sense that he was doing anything illegal. We just needed him to grow up. And he's been so impressed with how he's responded to that and how he's come into Big 12 play and immediately made a big impact on his team. Well, you play for Bob Huggins. I mean, you're going to do it his way. And, in fact, Culver signed a contract. Coach Huggins gave many parameters. Like, you go to class on time, you come to all of our stuff that's basketball related, you come to that on time, you treat people with respect. And once Derek Culver signed that contract, he has been unbelievable. And sometimes guys just need a little maturity and discipline. Thomas DeZagua tying this game at 12, buried it from the quarter. That's the junior's second triple. And that's the thing with DeZagua. You think you have closed out but he's got such a quick release. And the reason it is quick is because he does a great job of setting his feet while the ball is traveling to him. Emmett Matthews Jr., another freshman that Bob Huggins is trying to have grow up quickly here in Morgantown. In fact, after the game at K-State, said he was going to make a priority in getting Matthews more minutes. The grip. Not a good angle, but uses the window and it falls down. Now the scoring has come alive in this first half. Back and forth. Yeah, a little bit of flow here. And Griff, McGriff better or at his best when he's getting things moving towards the rim. McCabe guarded tightly. It rattles out. And McGriff grabs the rebound. If you're a West Virginia fan, you're thinking, last year this kid with goggles just crushed us. That's Cam McGriff. He had to wear it because he had his eye poked the game before. But no goggles, same player. West Virginia trying to cash in on the offensive end after a takeaway defensively. They'll get two shots. Well, likely turns it over, gets too deep. Help rotates for West Virginia. A poor exchange, but Jay, you always tell those bigs especially but all your players follow the shot assume a miss and Matthews who just hit a jumper an opportunity for a couple free throws right here and Matthews a player who may not have saw a lot of the court early in this season or in Big 12 play but again when you're 0-3 back against the wall let's try everybody we have and see who works and, and he's a talented kid I mean, he was highly recruited an excellent get for Bob Huggins and his staff originally was going to UConn to play for Kevin Ollie and with the coaching change Had the opportunity then to look again and West Virginia gets him. Hey, he's versatile tons of upside He's gonna be a really good player. You know, he reminds me a little bit of Who's that six seven left-handed sleek athletic is Kelly Oubre that was at, at Kansas I think you ever get him to be Kelly Oubre I think Bob Huggins would, would take that. 
Trailing three, and it goes right down Thomas DeSagua. That's his third three in Oklahoma State back in front. Well, that is why DeSagua plays at this level. He's an elite shooter. Again, doesn't need much space. He's 6'4", has a little bit of length as well. Great cut. The finish not there. Blocked away Cameron McGriff. Emmett Matthews almost had another basket. He's made a real impact since coming in. Well, this is a great block by McGriff. But if I am West Virginia, I would continue to backcourt or back cut Oklahoma State. They like to extend pressure one pass away. And as an offensive player, if you bring your man above the three-point line, that creates lots of room to cut back door, makes it easier on the passer. And McGriff makes a good block. We've seen a name make a nice block. But West Virginia should keep going to that. Chase Harlow steps into it and knocks it down. Nice mid-range shot right there by Harlow. And once again, West Virginia going to the press. Oklahoma State breaks it easily. This is not press Virginia from the last couple of years, Bob Huggins said. He said this team is just simply not good enough. That time it leads to a foul for Cameron McGriff. He's at the foul line when we come back. Back and forth in this big track himself, Bob Huggins. And that thing looks brand new. It is beautiful first-class facility. As good as any facility in America. I mean, it, it really captures the tradition of West Virginia basketball. And right there, that was his father who played here in 1951-52. Coach Huggins, extremely proud of that. There's the practice facility, Jay. Surprised you didn't get some jumpers up yesterday. <laughs> that would have been ugly. But, but he was so gracious in, in taking all of us around. And... He raised the money. He, again, it captures West Virginia basketball. It is absolutely a beautiful facility. As much as it a recruiting tool that everything's updated and new for the guys he's trying to get to West Virginia, it's a museum yeah. of the last 100 of years of basketball. Everything's so well represented and well constructed. Going inside, Matthews has been active. West Virginia is cleaned up on the glass, but just can't finish at the rim. Boy, those are those bunnies right there that if you lose a ball game, you kick yourself later when you miss those inside. And West Virginia continues to attack the offensive glass, just hasn't made Oklahoma State West pay Virginia quite Oklahoma enough yet. Foul call that will send Isaac likely to the foul line. And going back to that tour, it's one thing to check it out if you know, me and you headed over yesterday to check it out. But for Bob Huggins to take time out of his day to show us what was really a vision of his when he came to West Virginia. And then what he has taken the time to build and make into such a beautiful museum and way to kind of that'll be the impact that Bob Huggins has that facility more than winning and losing basketball games. And you and I have covered a lot of games over the years. He's as generous with his time as anybody. But you could see the glow in him, how proud he is of that facility. And we told Holly, he said, I'm most proud of the practice facility. It is absolutely a wonderful place. And I think another big thing is that it is really open to former players. Former players have a locker room uh, and a space that they can come and work out if they recently graduated and say they're playing professionally and still trying to develop their game it had everything yeah we we kept thinking this tour has got to end it, right it, it, it just kept going interactive video all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff it was it was an amazing to uh, spend that time with him inside the cameron mcgriff gets his own shot and draws the foul this team, these two teams, they have battled inside for the entire first half. And again, oh, uh, a foul call. Number, number one, Duke, number seven, Kansas, highlighting our star studded big Monday doubleheader on ESPN. First, it's the Blue Devils and the Orange, and then Big 12 battle, Kansas and Texas. We're talking about parity in the Big 12. Well, not in this matchup. The Jayhawks have won the last nine, but 13 of the last 14 against the Longhorns. Well, Texas is going to have to score. You know, they, they have struggled, particularly from the perimeter. Did in Stillwater against a good defensive effort by Oklahoma State. But when you go there, 
in that building, you have to make shots. And Texas can make some early, get some confidence. Now, they're certainly good enough defensively to go hang in that game. West Virginia, the last team in the Big 12 without a conference win. 0-3 here at home. And what fans and Bob Huggins, you would say, this is a must win. you got to get this one against Oklahoma State. This team has never been 0-4 in conference play under Bob Huggins. Well, you look at those three games decided by a combined total of 12 points. And so they had a chance inside of a couple minutes in every one of those. Just wasn't able to close. And as you know, Jay, the formula at this level is protect the home floor and steal some away from home. And this is their opportunity today against Oklahoma State to protect the home floor. And it only takes one when you're a young team or inexperienced, you've been struggling. One game completely can change how you feel about yourself. It's a home floor that they failed to protect the last two years. Oklahoma State has won this matchup both last year and the year before. Can't find their stroke. Both teams have gone cold offensively in the last few minutes. Kick out. Open three, but a foul called first. It's a charge taken by Cameron McGriff. He has 15 of the team's 24 charges. As you mentioned, 15 charges taken now. But look at the rotation over. The help defense. And then Haley right you've got to be cognizant of that. Come set, jump stop, avoid the contact. Because it was a good play to get to the heart of the defense of Oklahoma State. A good cook at, kick out for a wide open three. But when you continue to flow to the rim, you know, that's a turnover. Good job of Cam McGriff getting in position. Three-point shooting today has been the difference. Cowboys three of six. West Virginia one of 11 from deep. Take away here. Jermaine Haley throws it down. Could that be the spark that this team needs? Well, one of the reasons Bob Huggins has settled in with Haley in heavy minutes since conference plays began is because of his length. His length to see over the top of offenses uh, uh, defenses on the offensive end and then right there the run through using that six seven link run through the pass and get production off a turnover Jones with a hand in his face fading away does not matter Curtis Jones and the Cowboys have silenced this crowd and Jones is second big bucket for Oklahoma State has really struggled from the floor in Big 12 conference play. Two of 16 field goal percentage. So that's positive news if you're an Oklahoma State fan. And there's the run through right there. As DeMuth reverses the ball, doesn't look to see where the defense is. And great job of the run through and finish. And then Jones, who's a spot up shooter, but he's really athletic and elevates on his jumpers. You see him right there rising over the top. And if you're Chase Harler, could you have played any better defense? Cut him off. You don't let him get to the rim. You can test. Just a good athletic play right there from Jones. West Virginia in the bonus one and one. Haley will get the second. SEC, ACC doubleheader on our Super Tuesday. We start in Athens, Georgia, taking on number 18, Kentucky at 7 Eastern, and then Notre Dame and North Carolina from Chapel Hill. Two great matchups. That's why it's a Super Tuesday on ESPN. So 4.30 left, Jay, here in this half, and neither team has taken control. And obviously, if you can get on some kind of run, even if it's one of those mini 9-3, 10-4 type runs, you carry the momentum into halftime. And... That is huge for either team. They go to those positives to talk about. Alpha dog, Cam McGriff drills another one. He was the guy who killed this West Virginia team a year ago, 20 points. He got a little while to get going, but now up to six points in his first half. And McGriff has struggled at times to settle in to that alpha dog on the offensive and staying within himself but also being a guy that they can trust and go to and he started to be more consistent here the last three or four games Brandon Napper can't knock it down was left wide open from the double team on Derek Culver Oklahoma State pushing the pace here's McGriff left it short
Trying to get it to Culver again. Could not come up with the pass. Right back to McGriff. Why not? And one. Hoop in the harm for Cameron McGriff, who has come alive here in Morgantown. Oklahoma State leading by finishing. And you see right there, McGriff, eight points on just five shots. He's been getting to the line. You know, he's doing his work, rebounding. But as you and I talked about earlier, a key thing for him, which he's been able to do in Big 12 Conference play, is stay out of foul trouble. So therefore, you put him on the floor. And he's averaging about 38 minutes a game. They have to have him out there to have a chance to win. Completes the and one. West Virginia trying to counter with a three on the other end. They cannot shoot it from deep. One for 13 today. Just one making 13 three-point attempts. West Virginia shoots 34% from three as a team. And certainly have had many moments this year where they've struggled from long distance. And if it's, if it's not going, Jay, you, you have to... As guards read the tempo, so you got to get things moving towards your rim. Penetration when Culver's in the game and you have a half court offensive opportunity, you got to throw it into him, get his touches. Because when they have done that a few times, something positive has come from them. One bright spot for West Virginia, they are perfect from the foul line, eight for eight. And this is a team that came in shooting under 60% in Big 12 play from the foul line, so they've remedied that. It's just can they extend it? To the three-point line well the two things that have killed them all season long uh, the turnovers not turning people over which is uncharacteristic of what you've seen from West Virginia certainly the last four years but in conference play you can add in the free throw shoot swatted away by Derek Culver the eraser at the rim when you break pressure and you have numbers, you want to attack. But look at the athleticism. This is 6'10", 255. Waters, who is a skilled guard on a lot of bigs, would have had the angle and been able to turn the corner. Two things there. Athleticism to not allow Waters to do that by Culver. And then the other thing, the feel to back off and not create contact so that he can block that shot. That's tremendous athleticism and upside from Culver. Waters coming off that career high 19 points against Texas the win on Wednesday night He has zero so far today. Does it matter when your teammates are bailing you out? Maurice Kalu the freshman drains his first three of the day in Oklahoma State up by seven now speaking of young guys who are playing more Maurice Kalu has played 35 minutes total in the last two games and he has continued to make smart plays and be confident as West Virginia right there careless turnover Bob Huggins said after the Kansas State loss, we are not good enough offensively to turn the ball over. Just can't have it. Two minutes remaining in this first half. Oklahoma State in the driver's seat. Curtis Jones looking for more and finds it. Three point shot by Jones. How did that go down? That's a gift right there because West Virginia was solid defensively. You force a contested three. But you, you can't play him 40 minutes as a freshman because when he gets tired, he turns the ball over. Lindy Waters now is your point guard. And that shows the versatility and the experience of a guy like Waters that he can handle the ball well enough to get Oklahoma State into some offense. If you're West Virginia, no made field goals in the last three and a half minutes, what do you do offensively to get going? Maybe our answer right here. No, another missed three. Culver, the offensive yeah, rebound, yeah, yeah, yeah. puts it home. Yeah, I, I waited to see if that would go. That's a quick three right there. I, I think, again, you've got to get Culver a touch. I mean, he's playing confident. He's a legitimate force inside offensively. Foul called underneath against Maurice Kalou. The other thing is, Jay, with West Virginia, you get ball movement. Oklahoma State's going to extend their pressure. Oklahoma there should be some gaps to drive it. When you drive it, you force a help situation. And when you force a help situation, a lot of times on the weak side, that leaves rebounders, right? And that in itself can be an offense for West Virginia. But you got to get things moving towards the rim. And the only way to do that is ball movement early in your half-court set. 
Number one, Duke. Number seven, Kansas. You can see those two teams on our big Monday doubleheader on ESPN. Zion Williamson and the Blue Devils hosting Syracuse. And then a Big 12 battle, 9 p.m. Eastern. Kansas and Texas. The number seven, Jayhawks. How is life different now for the Jayhawks? They had that wake-up call to Iowa State. Struggling with injuries. How do they find form and make sure that the Big 12 is still theirs? Well, I think first and foremost what those self teams have always done. They've got a guard in the half-court set You don't have as a beauty, so you don't have the advantage at least on the interior the depth of the interior that Many of the years they've won the league that they've had that allows big 12 teams to match up a little bit better But Diedrich Lawson is a low a mismatch advantage every game for Kansas Run your offense through him and continue to get stops and have your defense as the priority which has been the formula for Bill Self all these years. James Bolton. You're talking about some excellent West Virginia teams. This is a program that's been to the Sweet 16 three of the last four years. So, so you're not coming to Morgantown in a stretch where they aren't good. And you certainly weren't coming to a stretch where they weren't tough. Helps when you make threes. They've knocked down six of 11. And you contrast that with West Virginia, who's one for 14. In Oklahoma State last year had four wins against top 10 teams and in each win they hit nine threes or more and so it's not an accident and coach huggins talked about that prior to this game if you defend the three-point shot that helps you against oklahoma state they rely on it in a big way off the ball foul called against the freshman emmett matthews bob huggins thought it was going to be called the other way and again both teams in the bonus so Curtis Jones has the foul. Yeah, let's take a look, Jay. Coach Huggins. He felt like McGriff was moving back right there. Coach Huggins always active on the sideline. Whether but typically he's at his own guys. Lots of conversations with the officials. You know, and there's there's a method to his madness in that. I think one of the great things that Bob Huggins that you and I were talking about in preparation for today is the subtle, simple, small changes he makes within a basketball game. He is, he does not overthink things. What's a change you would make at halftime if you're Bob Huggins? What is that simple change to wake this West Virginia team up? You got to have a good start the second half, but defensively you've got to put Oklahoma State in the half court Not let them get anything off the bounce keep them in front make them score over the top and then offensively You got to get Culver involved on a consistent basis right on cue the double team knocked it away from the freshman Culver But they were trying to feed him Ten seconds left in this first half Oklahoma State will surely hold for the last shot here Leading by 11 at the buzzer, looking for more, doesn't fall. Well, that is a term. I already like him. He's from Kentucky. He's a basketball guy. That's all we need. That's a pretty good endorsement, Coach Bob Huggins. He's excited and thinks he's going to do a great job. Brendan Manzer, Jay Alter with you in the last four minutes of that first half. You said, watch out. Who can go on a mini run? And at that point, Oklahoma State, they were only leading by one. Went on a 16 to 6 run to close the half. That is why they enter with an 11 point lead. Yeah, nobody had taken control up to that point. A couple of boxers just sparring. And Oklahoma State, a quick five spot because you got a jumper from McGriff and then a three point play in transition. That bumped it to six. You get a couple of stops. And there's that run, the momentum, the confidence going into halftime. And when you're in tight game, those are absolutely crucial. If you're West Virginia, how do you contain it to just a mini run, leave it in the first half, and get going in the second half? Don't panic. A lot of time left in the game. Start on the defensive end, getting one and done and stops, and attack the offensive box, which is what over, which West Virginia does so great right there. And that allows them to also, Jay, excuse me, set up that full court pressure. A great hustle play there from Lamont West. That is what Bob Huggins said he lacks not him specifically but this team they just lack those hustle plays that west virginia has had in years past they've come out shot out of a cannon in this second half right back to west he got the three and as i said in the first half if they can speed up oklahoma state 
with the way that West Virginia struggles in the half court, if they can play quicker, they get in more rhythm on the offensive end. And, and those guys that can shoot the three like West love that three in transition because you're naturally flowing to the rim. Cam McGriff with the answer to quiet down this crowd. Coach Mike Boynton calls him the alpha dog. And he has showed it early and often in this game. Takes it right to the hoop after West Virginia opened with five straight points. And Bob Huggins talked about how much respect he had for McGriff. McGriff, quite honestly, is a Bob Huggins-type player with the motor that he has. Lamont West, three straight makes in this second half. West Virginia might have found their go-to guy. Well, it's not an accident. West hits the three in transition. And when you're a shooter, that opens up the basket. And now you have a little bit of feel and rhythm. Able to knock down that mid-range baseline jumper. McGriff, who's not typically the Oklahoma State ball handler, breaks the press himself. Oklahoma State has his lead because of their three-point shooting. They go inside this time. McGriff muscling his way to the hoop. Doesn't go, but the follow finish there. Perfect position for Urine to put it home. And Ane right there using his quickness. Route tried to put a body on him. Did not, and Ane went right around him on that weak side for the putback. James Bolden in trouble. Goes inside to West again. A lot of contact and a whistle comes. Lamont West has all seven points of the second half for West Virginia. Much better energy on the offensive end from West Virginia. Harder cuts, crisper ball movement. Sometimes with this young West Virginia team, the ball sticks, even on ball reversal. These guys not moving it crisply, getting the defense to shift. Bob Huggins talked about that yesterday, but they've definitely been better here the first two-plus minutes. Yorane picked up his third foul there. He's a freshman who we just saw him score on the offensive end, but they really rely on him against this size in West Virginia. He's at six foot ten, one of the few big bodies this Cowboys team has. And a legitimate rim protector. And West Virginia fans can relate with Kanate being out. You know what a luxury that is to have. Somebody on the back end to not only block shots, but alter shots as well. And I'm glad you mentioned Sagaba Kanate's name because when West Virginia loses their leading scorer and rebounder, and they've still been able to compete. All three Big 12 losses by a combined 12 points without by far their best player, one of the best players in the league. You know, it is important to mention that. Yeah, it has a little bit of an impact, doesn't it? I mean, it's, <laughs> Just he's their best player at both ends of the floor. Trying to keep this offensive spurt going. Inside to Culver, he's fouled. You said it a lot in the first half. Find a way to get the ball to the freshman, Derek Culver. Are they doing it enough for your liking? You love that right there. Bolden did a nice job of getting to the middle of Oklahoma State's defense, but he didn't get sped up. Kept the dribble alive, waited till he drew the help, and then you dump it down to Culver. Now, the, the one thing with Culver, it's a lot to ask of a guy in the half court, Jay, and I've said they need to give him the ball, but he's only been back now his sixth game. Who's a freshman? When you get hit touches inside, you can tell he doesn't have great feel when Oklahoma State is doubled and triple teamed. He doesn't feel that yet. He's turned the ball over because of that, but I don't think that should discourage you from trying to go in there if you're West Virginia. Double team comes immediately, and it's a jump ball. But the Mountaineers have ramped up the pressure. Bob Huggins told us yesterday, we have not pressed because I don't feel we have the personnel to pull it off. But the pressure, that doesn't mean you have to press full court, but it's definitely helped them in this game. And it doesn't mean you have to steal the ball and get a live ball turnover. It, it may simply mean just to speed Oklahoma State up and force them into some tough shots and tough passes. Blocking called against Derek Culver. That's his second. Again, pressure, the back door. With the extended pressure and likely as you mentioned earlier jay only a freshman but a body that can absorb contact and not get driven off course fading away can't hit it you're an a flying in the finish doesn't go but he was fouled on his way to the rim 
Urine has been active in this game. The freshman at six foot ten using that size inside. Yeah, Culver, you see right there, doesn't go find Ine and root him out. And Ine is mobile and athletic big. Gets his second offensive rebound here in the early part of the second half. And the freshman steps to the line. Fascinating story here on Urine. He is missing two fingers from a childhood accident on his right hand. He only has three of the five fingers. Very tough to see. You see it in the middle there. It was a blender accident. He says he can't even remember a time where he did have five fingers. He has just been living with the three fingers, so it's not really a disability like you or I would think of it. It's like he's told us. It's, it's what I know. I, I know nothing different. I, I think the impressive part is how he can catch the ball in traffic. He's got, does a great job. Guards can dump it down to him. That's just amazing. It does not limit him in one bit. Quick three there, a run out for West Virginia. Jermaine Haley, hard to the hole, lays it in. So if you're gonna pressure Oklahoma State, speed up the game, you have to make sure when the ball's advanced up the floor, you catch up and pressure shooters. Dezagua had to rush the shot, takes a quick shot, and that allows West Virginia to get the defensive rebound and then have the numbers. Five seconds to shoot. McGriff steps into a three. Off the mark this time. And a foul called on the rebound. And it goes against Oklahoma State. So West Virginia, they've cut this 11-point halftime lead to six. Bob Huggins has the momentum. They'll try and keep it going. Just picked up his fourth foul. You take a look at it there. Now they called it late. Definitely was a late whistle. And to be your fourth foul, it is a big call in this game as Ine is off the floor. And that's a bad break because you see there, Ine never touched it. And on the other side, Derek Oklahoma State Culver. wishing that your Ine was in the game. Derek Culver capitalizes on the offensive glass. And Ine's length, his rebounding ability. He's been attacking the offensive glass. Mike Boynton elected when he picked up his third here in the second half to keep him in the game. He's been unable to stay out of foul trouble, and they've wanted him on the floor. But that's a tough break for Oklahoma State because that really changes their personnel. A three to quiet this crowd. Good time for the first basket for the junior, Lindy Waters. Waters is that guy that will do whatever it takes to win. He can play the one through four offensively. He can guard the one through four defensively. And so as soon as you sleep on him, he's a guy that can get a couple of quick buckets for you. Had a career high 19 points Wednesday night against Texas, and it took them until the second half to get that first main three. On the other end, it could be a three-point play the old-fashioned way, driving right inside for two, James Bolden. And I love what Bolden has done here in the second half. He has become a driver. The best thing he does, in all honesty, is play off the ball and shoot it. But forced to have it in his hands, driving it hard, and drives it right at Cam McGriff to create the contact. That was a tough play by the little fella right there. West Virginia 14 to 16 from the foul line with James Bolden completing the three-point play. He had only six feet. That was a fearless take into McGriff, who's been a monster defensively. Just a strong move. You know, when you go strong, no matter what size you are, and you don't shy away from the contact, if the defender's out of position, the official's going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Isaac Likely into attack mode. Hoop in the harm. These two trading punches. Now it's Isaac Likely with a chance for a three-point play. Likely has been able to expose West Virginia a couple times today. This is the spread motion offense. And once you get some cutters to the opposite side, that clears out a lane for Likely. And that's just a rip and attack. He got Bolden earlier in the half. And then that time attacks once again. And, and likely is a guy that if he gets an angle, 
big body can get to the rim. West Virginia has delivered a couple of punches in this second half, but the Lindy Waters three, and now a three-point opportunity for Isaac Likely, which he can't convert. They've answered right back immediately. Well, I think they learned the other night against Texas after leading by 15 at halftime that teams are going to come make a run at this level in this league, and you better expect that, and you're going to have to be able to fin that off settle down whether it's get a series of defensive stops or make sure that you get good looks on a series of offensive possessions looking inside to lamont west it's knocked out of bounds will stay with west virginia cameron griff <laughs> talk about having some momentum he almost went back to the locker room after knocking that one out of bounds Lamont West for three off the mark Remember he started with the first seven points of this second half for West Virginia got them right back in this game But it's cooled off since and, I, and I'm okay with that shot because as you are alluding to shooting it well Oklahoma State goes underneath out of bounds They go zone and left Lamont West wide open right there Waters was open couldn't find the three second effort McGriff no good and it's West Virginia ball Usually when Lindy Waters is left wide open, he'll make you pay. And McGriff right there, as you watch him, he's having a really good season for Oklahoma State. But with his athleticism, just go straight to the rim. You'll see when he's contested a lot. He will shy away from the shot blocker. Double clutch. And he misses a lot of bunnies because of that. And he's got to be a guy, when you have that kind of athleticism explosiveness I mean, you get that basketball and you just try I would try to go dunk everything McGriff out of this game taking a seat with three fouls Nora day the freshman at six foot ten with four fouls Contravius Jones has checked into the game he has not touched the court in eight games but he's six foot ten and they need some size and they have prepared him in practice since the Texas game because they felt like because of West Virginia's size that they would need him to play some ineffective there the offensive glass is where West Virginia's made their money their 17th second chance point on 14 offensive rebounds they have dominated well, that's what has allowed them to stay in the ball game attack the offensive glass they've been getting to the free throw line and now here in the second half, the half-court offense is better. And that's how you cut a lead and dip it to four. If you're Mike Boynton, how much longer do you want to keep Yorinay on the bench? I know he's got four fouls, but if they keep cleaning up on the glass, you can't sit him forever. Well, you just buy your time with both he and McGriff, and you manage it. Uh, that's, that's a feel thing. Oklahoma State has had to deal with a lot of foul trouble this year and they and McGriff at times has been in foul trouble Lindy Waters no good well, Since urinay has been out of this game West Virginia has been able to claw back Using that offensive glass foul on the floor They will step aside West Virginia Oklahoma State Trading punches in this Big 12 battle. We continue second half action. Them offensively, that's been West. And remember, he's coming off a really good performance on the road at K-State, where he had 21 points created by five three-point makes. If Bob Huggins told us he was dealing with a bad wrist for a lot longer than they even knew about. He didn't tell him, he didn't let on that it was hurting, but finally he feels like he's back to 100%. And he's playing like it, especially offensively. You mentioned the 21 points, and he's looked real sharp in this second half. Yeah, he didn't shoot it well at all last season. And as you mentioned, he didn't let on that he had the wrist injury, had some ligament issues in his thumb. It's the type of young man he is, but he is definitely playing the way that he's capable in terms of shooting the basketball right now. And Bob Huggins has cranked up the full court pressure. Let's see how Oklahoma State responds to it. And, and that's big right there because you don't get it in. Now it's a spot throw in. Makes it tougher to break pressure on the spot throw ins. You may not have seen it for a lot of this season, but Press Virginia here in the second half at a two-point game. 
against Oklahoma State. Cowboys led it the half by 11 points. And West Virginia slowly but surely has made it a one possession game. Lindy Waters on the drive, draws the foul. That goes against Lamont West. And that's happened a couple times this game, Jay, with West Virginia. You get pressure, Oklahoma State's offense stagnant, shot clock going down. I think it got to 10 right there. Once you get to 10 or below, then defensively, you just have to be solid. You've already put the offense in a tough spot. West Virginia, a couple times today, has fouled and bailed Oklahoma State's offense out. Going inside, Contravius Jones. That's a beautiful shot. More impressive when you consider he has not played in the last eight games. Well, he did a nice job of getting to the strong part of his post game at this point, going over that left shoulder, being a right-handed player. Andrew Gordon takes it right into Jones and draws the foul. Jones, he came into camp in June, 320 pounds. Mike Boynton said, you can't touch the court looking like that. He has dropped to 260, has worked his butt off, and that is why he's getting rewarded with some playing time with URNA in foul trouble. And right there, he's got to back off and contain, but definitely a good body upside. They think that he's going to be a good player in time. But as Bob Huggins is learning with his team as well, having a lot of freshmen it's not the ability, it's just the understanding of what it takes at this level. A very young Oklahoma State team getting tested here on the road. Not a single senior on the roster, a lot of freshmen on the floor for Mike Boynton, and they've got a four-point lead here in Morgantown. Shot clock was winding down again, and another foul called. James Bolden on the reach. I think what you're going to get is Lamont West inside, or do they get did they get Bolden right there? I think Bolden heard the whistle, said that can't be on me. We were just told that it was on Lamont West, so it must have been in the post. Yeah, there. it was. It was Contravius Jones who had him isolated, alone inside. That's the third foul called against Lamont West. So they go inside and find a bucket with Duncan DeMuth, another freshman on the floor for the Cowboys. And this is a young Oklahoma State team that Mike Boynton has on the floor right now. Three freshmen, the transfer, Curtis Jones, who became eligible in mid-December, out there with the veteran Lindy Waters. Yorane and Cameron McGriff, the two go-to guys inside, both on the bench right now for Oklahoma State. Bolden. Cashes in on a three. James Bolden. And West Virginia cuts the lead in half. As I mentioned, he is better off the ball, although that was in his hands right there. Probably West Virginia's best overall three-point shooter. Derek Culver moved over to deny Isaac likely a clear lane. Called for the foul. And again, the isolation of Likely on that right side to drive. And here's Bolden. A drive, he gets a retreating Likely, and Likely not able to recover to contest on the step back right there from Bolden. Sports Center tonight, 11 p.m. Eastern. John Anderson, Kenny May, a loaded Sports Day NFL playoffs, Colts, Chiefs, Cowboys, and Rams. And then you'll get all your college basketball highlights. Not to mention Thunder and Spurs round two. It's all on Sports Center, 11 Eastern, and always on the ESPN app. And I think one thing to keep in mind with Oklahoma State, Michael Weathers turned his ankle early in the first half, will not play today. That puts more pressure on the freshman Isaac Likely. He does a great job, Jay, of taking care of the ball, but when he gets tired, those turnovers start to come. He's playing heavy minutes here this afternoon on the road. Trey Dooms on the drive. We mentioned it in the first half, but it bears repeating. Freshman out of Georgia. He was planning on redshirting this year. Bob Huggins said you have the athleticism, but his shot was not ready to play in Big 12 basketball. But because of the 0-3 start, he said, you know what? I've got this kid on the bench. Let's pull the redshirt, give him a shot. 
unlucky from the home rim. Leaves the front end at a one and one, and to make matters worse, Oklahoma State has the ball. Bob Hoggins can't believe it. <laughs> that was far into the floor for us. Let's take a look right here, Jay. Let's see if Bob Huggins has has a case. Let's see Jones and Culver right there. First of all, how about the unlucky rim? And there's a the reaction. It's tough, still tough to tell. Look, Oklahoma State had the inside position, but did Culver knock it out or not? We don't know. <laughs> you know, a lot of great things about Coach Huggins. But one of the things I appreciate is this late in his career, his drive and passion to win has not been compromised. It is no different than when he was at Akron, when he was at Cincinnati. And as you mentioned, pulling Dooms out of redshirt. His, his, you know, why are you doing that? Because I want to win right now. That's what he told and, us and, yesterday. And we're hoping that he's going to give us a better chance to win some of these close games that we've been losing. Well, it's the unknown, right? We don't know, but if he can help, then we might as well try. 15 different players have touched the court in a West Virginia uniform, still trying to figure out who the best five are to give themselves a chance to win in this tough Big 12. Derek Culver, surely one of them muscling his way in. Another offensive rebound leads to two. See, to me, there's nothing wrong. I think that's a great job of Dooms. You get deep into Oklahoma State's defense. You force Jones to come over on you. That leaves little guys on the weak side having to deal with the size of Derek Culver. 12 points and 10 rebounds. It's a double-double, which is what Culver has been averaging in Big 12 play. And this is where West Virginia has the advantage, inside with Culver. Pounding the glass, and you have DeZagua and Curtis Jones, and there's Culver. I mean, that's an easy one for him. Strong body. It was just like little gnats to him as he finishes. And that's going to be, Jay, over the last nine minutes. What's going to continue to allow West Virginia to stay in the game, put themselves in a position to win, attack the offensive glass. No question that's an advantage for them here against Oklahoma State. Both teams in the bonus, so we will be shooting foul shots the rest of the way. That's a tough take, and somehow it falls for James Bolden. He's played really well the second half. You can tell leadership mode has kicked in for him. Five-point lead for the Cowboys on the road here in Morgantown. Deep three from the parking lot. Somehow it goes Curtis Jones. I'm telling you, the last five games, Jones hasn't been able to throw it in the ocean from a rowboat. Two of <laughs> two of 16 from three from from the field in Big 12 play. But he's made some huge shots, made big shots in the first half. And Look again, at this range. And this is good defense by West Virginia, with the exception of going behind the screen on a three-point shooter. And when, as soon as you make a mistake with a guy who's had a little success and has confidence at this level they'll make you pay Isaac likely breaks the press goes coast to coast and the foul back to back big plays first it was Curtis Jones and then Isaac likely hooping the harm Oklahoma State now up by 10 well likely plays beyond his years he understands all phases of the game and against pressure you have numbers the ball gets advanced up the floor you attack and likely right there has had great success here in the second half getting to the rim whether it's been the half court or right there in the full court That just when West Virginia had clawed their way back into this game, it's back to an 11 point lead, which is the lead at halftime for Oklahoma State. Lindy Waters, Mike Boyne right here. You insert Lindy Waters back in, who will be your primary ball handler, but he does it above the under eight timeout. This will give likely the freshman extended rest moving forward.
Here's Derek Culver. Can't knock it down. West Virginia's gone cold. Oklahoma State just the opposite. Five of their last five. Jones trying to stay hot. Too strong. West Virginia running, pushing the tempo. Can it lead to three? No. It'll stay with West Virginia, though. Oklahoma State in the driver's seat. Final eight minutes. Cowboys lead. You're talking about some excellent West Virginia teams where Oklahoma State has had success. And you, and you look back at that game last year, it was two things. It was 10 three-point makes for Oklahoma State and then the 20 and 9 that Cam McGriff had. That's exactly what West Virginia needed, an effective inbound play to cut this lead to single digits. Mm -hmm. Aggressive, again from Bolden, that time off the bounce mid-range. Need more of that. I think that's positive. He's playing well and confident with the ball in his hands right now. Here's Cam McGriff, who had 20 points in that meeting a year ago. 11 points so far today. Five seconds to shoot. McGriff fading away. Doesn't go. And a great half-court defensive stance right there from West Virginia. Bolden keeps it in his hands. Foul on the floor, but he'll still be shooting because both teams are in the bonus. You look at that last defensive possession for West Virginia. It was very disciplined. Pressure, but solid. And that's... What West Virginia needs to do, Oklahoma State's offense, there's not a lot of ball here. And so it's really becomes mano a mano, one-on-one -on -one individual defensive efforts many times. Okay, James Bolden has the last three points for West Virginia as they try and come back in this game and get that first Big 12 win of the season. Big Monday, Duke and Syracuse leads things off, and then it's Kansas and Texas. Big 12 battle there. Both games also available on the ESPN app, but Big Monday starts 7 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. So you like to talk about the mini runs, right? Well, Oklahoma State had won 6 to nothing headed into that timeout. West Virginia's now come out with a 4 nothing run of their own. Isaac Likely. Oh, my! A man move for the freshman Isaac Likely on a rack attack, and he's got a career high 21 points. He has been an ex extremely solid freshman for Mike Boynton, but this is a coming out party for him in terms of offensive production. Good, another good finish by Bolden right there, and an answer to Likely's slam. Likely came into the game averaging seven points per game, respectable for a freshman. He's got 21, triple his production, and the Cowboys have needed every single point of it. Foul called there. Jermaine Haley can't believe it. And, and here's what's happening with Likely. No hesitation. You know, taking what the defense has given, most of it's been in the half court. And this right here, that's just rip straight line drive and welcoming anybody to rotate over if you will and contest in the second half likely is perfect five for five from the floor 15 points i'll tell you what you want to pick a time to have a career high how about in morgantown as a freshman if you look at this game for oklahoma state Early on, it was the Zagwa's three-point shot that sustained Oklahoma State offensively. And then as you closed out the half, that 16-6 run, the final four and a half minutes of the first half, it was Cam McGriff. And here in the second half for Oklahoma State, it's been a third Cowboy, Isaac Likely, his production offensively that's carried them. Trailing by nine, they've gone to James Bolden, West Virginia. They keep it in the junior's hands, fading away, hits it. James Bolden has been money in this second half. He's up to 20 points. Boy, what a matchup. Trading of baskets, making plays for your team between Isaac Likely of Oklahoma State and James Bolden of West Virginia. Those two guards have emerged in this second half, leading these two teams in a Big 12 battle. Cam McGriff off the mark. Can't hit it. Harlow a three. 
Those are the ones West Virginia has needed to bury, and they are 3 of 21 from 3. Quick in transition underneath. Great feed this time from Likely in the finish, Maurice Kalou. West Virginia, poor job of getting back in transition defensively. Likely in Oklahoma State getting the ball to the middle of the floor. This time likely setting up a teammate. Right back to Bolden. Why not? A charge called. Wave off the basket. And Bob Huggins can't believe it. All charge block plays are bang bang. Let's see if the Zagro gets outside the restricted area and is set. Tough to tell on that look. Yeah. In terms of being set, that's one that can go either way. But was he outside the restricted arc? His heels have to be outside that area. Safe to say Bob Huggins not happy, although there was a whistle on the inbound. An off-the-ball foul called against Oklahoma State, so while West Virginia lost the basket from Bolden, they do get the ball. So you, you think that's going to make Hugs forget about that no, uh, call? No, not. <laughs> no, no. Is that going to erase it from his memory? <laughs> James Bolden has 18 of his 20 points in this second half. He has been the hot hand. And I think the best part of it, Jay, is it's not spot-up threes. Out of necessity, he's having to handle the point guard position or a lot of the load. These plays are being made with the ball in his hands, and that's something that all teams need in the Big 12. A, a go-to guy here. You got the ball, it's late in the game, go make a play for us. And he's been able to do that. He's single-handedly kept the Mountaineers in the ball game. To the corner, Lamont West contested three, doesn't fall. West Virginia now shooting three of 22 from the perimeter. And it is tough to win Big 12 basketball matchups when you're shooting that poorly from three. Dump inside. Here's Cam McGriff going to work. Buries him. Boy, smart play by DeZago right there. That's not his thing. Drive it and pull up for a shot. And McGriff makes himself available and makes a tough shot. Four minutes remaining, and the halftime lead still stands. It's an 11-point advantage for Oklahoma State. Bolden chucks up a three, can't connect. And West Virginia looks all out of sorts offensively. And to make matters worse, a down Mountaineer in the corner. Just resume play. Now the line for Oklahoma State, Cameron McGregor. Culver is out of this game right now. They have relied on him inside. What will it take for West Virginia, trailing by 11, time not on your side, to try and come back in this game? Well, to simplify it, you, you can't panic on the defensive end. Continue to pressure, get the tempo up, but you've got to be solid. There's still enough stretches of potential defensive stops, and offensively, the ball's got to move no matter what they're running. And they've got to get things moving towards the rim, attacking off the bounce, especially with Culver out of the game. James Bolden has 18 of his 20 points to lead West Virginia in this second half. Passing it though. Here's Lamont West. Shot clock running down. West Virginia has to hurry. They do with West. Can't find a three. Offensive rebound. Gordon second effort. It's no good. Nothing will go down for West Virginia. And a jump ball after the miss. Mike Boynton Continuing to use that zone right there, spotting up against shooters. And against West Virginia, that's dangerous because of how well they offensive rebound. And in the zone, as you know, that's much tougher to find bodies to block off. For those looking for South Florida at Temple, that is starting now on the ESPN app. We will get you to Philadelphia as soon as our game ends here. West Virginia trailing by 12. Bolden got a three. He has 21 points in the second half alone. And he's been the guy, and with Culver on the bench, that just 
exemplifies that even more. Bolden, that's a tough shot and a big shot. West Virginia in jeopardy of falling to 0-4 in Big 12 play for the first time ever under Bob Huggins. And with plays like that, it might just happen. Oklahoma State, the immediate answer with Thomas DeZagua. And here's the pinch post action off the Muth, and that surprised West Virginia. That is not a guy that typically drives to the rim. But DeZagua seen that, saw the seam, did not hesitate. And a rare potential uh, and one, typically... He makes those three-point plays beyond the arc. 44% shooter from three. Hit two early in this game, then is cooled off. And West Virginia, only two and a half minutes. They have to hurry. That's something their offense is not used to doing. And the zone slows that up. That's part of the reason Mike Boynton is in there. Disrupts any kind of flow. Relying on Bolden. No good on that three. Missed it. And Oklahoma State will slow things down, leading by 11. It's all been on the back of Isaac Likely, a career-high 21. And they get it to the freshman, keeping it in the hot hands of Isaac Likely. Lindy Waters, one on the shot clock. This is the shot in West Virginia. This is go time, under two minutes, trailing by 11. The crowd urging this team to just get a shot up. Inside the culvert, contact, and the basket. The crowd understands you've got to make quick work. If you don't have the shot, look to drive. You've got to lengthen the game, get things moving towards the rim as they do right here. You get the foul, chance to cut the lead to eight and set up your pressure. Culver now up to 15 points and 14 rebounds. Remember, Oklahoma State had trouble closing against Texas on Tuesday night against full court pressure. West Virginia choosing to play this out. Oklahoma State smart to use the shot clock. Balls on the floor. Somehow kept alive by the Cowboys. Tipped around. DeZogwa still has it. Five seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Cut in. Waters. No. The finish. And a technical foul called on Cam McGriff for hanging on the rim. At least I believe that is the call. The officials now conferring. The shot clock was winding down. Cam McGriff comes flying in. And it looked like it was an immediate technical that came in. So what the officials are looking at on a play like that is the only reason you can hang on the rim is to protect yourself. And I think when he goes, and I think Mike Boynton's telling him that, you go for that dunk you miss, and while still hanging on the rim, trying to rebound the basketball shows that you are under control. And this would be Cam McGriff's fifth foul as well. Kelly Self coming over the top to Brendan. This is a big moment in the game with just a little more than a minute left. As it stands, West Virginia would get the basketball. What do we got, Brendan? So the explanation is just as we were talking about. When McGriff tried to get his rebound but while hanging on the rim, that's a technical. That's one shot. Since there's no team control, meaning neither team, when the whistle was blown, had possession of the ball, you go to the jump ball arrow. arrow, arrow. That favors West Virginia. So one shot here from James Bolden, and West Virginia will then get the ball back on this possession. Bolden, who was a perfect 7 for 7 from the foul line, misses that. So it stays an 8-point lead for Oklahoma State. And you ESPN.
If you're looking for South Florida at Temple, that game airing on ESPN News, we will get you to Philadelphia as soon as this one finishes up. So Cam McGriff, initially, we looked up at the monitor, stat monitor, five fouls with the technical. The book had him at four. That's what matters. He stays in the game with four fouls. It's that simple. Yeah, stats had it as a fifth. The overhead jumbotron here had it as a fifth. Fans were questioning that, but obviously he has the four. It was the official book. That's why that's there. Now, when Lindy Waters on the line for Oklahoma State, that's by design, get him the basketball. Second leading free throw shooter in the country. That's who you want to have the ball in his hands late in games. Waters moves to 41 from 43 from the foul line this season. He can close out a game single-handedly as long as you can get it to him. West Virginia has to score in a hurry. Here's Bolden, corner three. Got it! James Bolden. He now has 26 points, 24 of them in this second half. And Isaac likely draws the immediate foul. So likely he's been the leading scorer, a career high now for the freshman from Oklahoma State. 21 points, and he can add to it from the foul line. You see right there, option one is Cam McGriff, 76% free throw shooter. You obviously want it Waters' hands, as we mentioned. And then Mike Boynton wisely has Thomas DeZagua. And then Isaac Likely, who hit two huge free throws Tuesday night to seal the game against Texas Tech in Stillwater. That game Wednesday night, and Mike Boynton's team has come into Morgantown with some confidence. He told us, it only takes one. We finally got that one, and now we're going to start to roll, especially with a favorable schedule. A lot of games at home after this one. Yeah, four of the next five at home for Oklahoma State. Boynton, I'll tell you what he does. He, he gives his shooters confidence. He very rarely frowns at a marginal shot, and those guys believe they can make shots. Bolden somehow has kept it alive and he puts it in for two. James Bolden has done it all today for West Virginia. He's up to 28 points. You cannot fault the junior for this scoreline. Where every game's tight down the stretch, it comes down to guard play. And each team needs a go-to guy. West Virginia bringing that full court press. Can't get the turnover immediately. They've got a foul, right? You would think. Double team comes. Oklahoma State breaks the press. Still not fouling. Ten seconds of run off this clock. Now more under 30, and the foul finally comes. 13 seconds after Oklahoma State inbounded the ball. And I do understand Bob Huggins trying to give the trap one chance. But once Oklahoma State got behind that initial trap, and typically you want a foul. They probably let that go a little too long. You obviously have a sense of urgency now with so little time left. Ed Waters, the 95% foul shooter on the season, trying to finish this game out. It would be the third straight year that Oklahoma State has come into Morgantown and flown back to Stillwater with a victory. You know, some teams just have your number, and you, you, you can't explain it. And Oklahoma State has had the number of the Mountaineers here in Morgantown. Desperation three from Jordan McCabe. Off the mark, and a foul comes in. This will just about do it. Oklahoma State, what has impressed you most about this Cowboys effort on the road? Well, there was that great 16 to run to close out the first half, but I think the most impressive thing, Jay, was West Virginia came out the second half, got some energy, some momentum. The game was going their way, cut it to four, and every time they get within a couple of possessions, Oklahoma State would hit a key bucket, and much of that was the freshman Isaac Likely. So that those are characteristics of veteran teams on the road. When the home team's making a run at you, switching the momentum, but this young team, Seemed to make a play every time that it was a detrimental that they do so. And for West Virginia, the Mountaineers will fall to 0-4 to start Big 12 conference play. Two starters 
over the last three seasons. They've been staples in Bob Huggins' starting lineup. Issa to play a little bit out of position. Love what he did today. Culver's got lots of upside. It's a lot to ask of that freshman. They just got to get some consistent production out of guys. It doesn't have to be at a high level. It's just got to be in a way that Coach Huggins knows what he's going to get out of them. James Bolden now over 30. He's made four threes. West Virginia has shot six of 29 from beyond the arc. So a career effort from James Bolden, but it's at a losing effort. Oklahoma State for the third year in a row comes into Morgantown and leads with a win.